What's up everyone, The Bob here. Today I'm going to be going over a quick guide on how to build your Shire Mod Halfling home. As well as point out a few key features of the home that separate it from a standard vanilla storage cell. Much like the other features of the Shire Mod itself, its player home has a lot of unique traits and details that a lot of people don't know about. So, I'd like to cover those in this video. Without further ado, let's jump right in. To access the player home, you will need to begin the first main quest. As you can see, I've traveled to the gate past Blackbriar Manor and the entrance for the Dongar DLC, activating a trigger that starts the mod. Once you've finished killing the Thalmor and speaking to Byrosol... So, you mean to be rewarded for taking a life, do you? You'll need to access the gate. When you arrive in the Shire, three objectives will appear. The first continues the main quest, the second begins the evil main quest, which is an alternate main quest line, recommended for a second playthrough. However, we're more interested in the third, which tells us to purchase land in the Shire. Oh, this again. You've been smoking too much, cousin. Now for this one, we're going to need to travel to Mikhail Dolby. Upon arriving, or up this hill to the top where the quest marker points to. We're looking for a wooden stand in front of the mayor's hut. If you activate it and the menu only has a cancel option, that's because you don't have enough gold. The land requires 5,000 to purchase. For the sake of the video, I will proceed to cheat my way to wealth. Now that I have 5,000, a second menu option has appeared. I will select it, and a new objective will show. Uh, visit your new home, much like Hearthfire. The home, named Galador's, is located between Bargend and Further Hill. When you get close enough, your side quest will complete. From here, we can start building our home. First thing you'll notice when you approach the main workbench is a teleport to halfling home, spell tome. This was designed, uh, for instance, when you're traveling Skyrim and you need to drop off some items at your home or do whatever you need to do at your home. But perhaps you're over encumbered or don't want to travel through the gate, you can just teleport. Now this spell doesn't work in the Shire's world space, just as a precaution to avoid possible conflicts with the quest line, but it will work in any interiors and in Skyrim itself. Another feature you acquire right as you purchase the land is the carriage. Need a ride? This is so you can travel directly to any Where do you want in to Skyrim, go? bypassing the Shire Gate. It's time. With that out of the way, now we need materials to build our home. Once again, very much like Hearthfire. There are two ways to access materials in the Shire. First is via Merchant. Merchants inhabit just about every village across the Shire, so finding them shouldn't be difficult. Conveniently, however, there's one place right next to the home. Like in the vanilla game, merchants Ooh, will sell items hey, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Look around. Just as a rule of thumb, if it's not a vanilla item, and it looks like it could be used to craft something, it probably can. So we're just going to collect those. If you're ever in the neighborhood again, you know where to find. D 
The other way is to order the materials. This is a more convenient, more expensive way to acquire them. To order materials, find the mailbox located near the road. A menu will pop up and there will be five options. Wood, tools, stone, ingots, and random. All with varying price requirements. Wood and stone have a fixed quantity, whereas the other three have a random number of materials per purchase, as well as the materials themselves being random. Once you buy one, a notification will appear telling you that it'll arrive in six hours. After six hours, the deliveries will appear. As soon as you've collected the materials, you can proceed to reorder them uh, whenever and however many times you want. There are really only two differences between the Shire and Hearthfire as far as crafting go. First are the tools. Things like shovels, hammers, chisels, or axes are required for most items, but aren't actually taken from your inventory when you build that object. This makes crafting more convenient, alongside adding a slight hint of realism. Other than that, time passes when you craft objects. So, if you play your cards right, you can order materials, then craft something, they'll likely be ready by the time you finish. Now the garden behaves a little differently than a hearthfire one does. Uh, here you plant in rows, offering less configurability but more quantity. As soon as you enter the player home, you'll be hit with a wall right in front of you that says something like, Dig Out Parlor. If you've got a pickaxe, you can do so immediately. And you'll see it behaves much like a vanilla ore vein. Once dug out, you can proceed to build the base of the room, because from here we can craft everything in the parlor. Most required items can be obtained by ordering them, however a decent amount of them need to be purchased from a merchant or acquired while in Skyrim. I'm going to move on to the second part of the video, and this will cover a few specialties within each room. First off, the library. There's a small, bag-end inspired study that houses the ability to craft paintings. All you have to do is sit in the seat where you'll be given an option to paint. Upon crafting a painting, you'll be given the option to change its frame.
Now we have our painting with a custom frame. I'm going to hold on to it for now uh, until I finish the kitchen. So, throughout the home, there'll be these little rectangles on the walls. Uh, these are locations where your custom paintings can be hung. Like so. And you can see the appropriate frame is with it. Uh, the kitchen's pretty standard. Got a pantry and plenty of containers to store food. Next, the dining room. The main quarters has one unique function, uh, that's a shower. If you walk near the bed, you'll see a clay statue. Activating it will allow you to configure the shower head. And here's the shower equipped and outfitted with a holy curtain to thwart off peeping mannequins. Turning the water on will cure all diseases that the player has. Uh, you'd see a notification if I wasn't speeding through the creation of this home, and thus causing them to work. Next up, trophy room. First up is a display to show off the hidden rings scattered around the Shire. A very Lord of the Rings inspired display. Each ring has a spot on the hand. I'll probably do a separate video in the future that covers their locations. Uh, same with the easter eggs. As is pretty common in mod homes with custom scripting, the Shire also offers display cases for dragon claws and masks. Same goes for specialty weapons. The Easter egg display operates the same way as the other displays, except each egg you collect offers a reward. 
Rewards are random, and you'd see what items I received if the notifications didn't lag like they are now. Uh, once again, that's because of how fast I'm running through this. A normal playthrough, you won't run into this issue. Last thing I want to cover is the furniture, most of which is configurable between a few designs with the option to make them sizable for a halfling character. That's it. There's a few more features, but I don't want to spoil everything here. I uh, hope you enjoy. Please make sure you download, endorse, and vote for the Shire. Until next time, the Bob.